What is up everyone and welcome back to the series. In this lesson we're going to continue with the data preprocessing course. It looks like we're starting with categorical and quantitative variables. So let's jump into it. Okay, so the types of data you're working with will continue. You're working with will determine the method you choose for dealing with missing values. There are two types of different variables, categorical and quantitative. Categorical variables, variables can take one value from a limit, limited set, whereas quali uh, quantitative variables can take any numerical value in a range. When you call a taxi, for example, you're encountering both types of data si simultaneously. So you can see on the right, you have the dollar amount. On the left, you have what type of car you're going to use. The categorical variable in Uber is the fare category. Uber X, Comfort Pool, Uber XL, Black, Black SUV, or uh, WAV. The number of fare, fare types is limited and customers select one of them. The cost of the trip, however, is a quantitative variable. The cost can be any value in a range such as 2 to $5 for a specific distance. It could be $2.10, $3.40, $4.75. It just depends on the demand and the number of cars available. Any an important characteristic of quantitative variables is that they can be compared to each other. For example, a trip that costs $2.50 is $1 more expensive than a trip that costs $1.50. However, categorical variables can't be compared like that. And even if you were to assign each traffic source a number ranging from 1 to 8, you still can't say that the select fare type is greater than UberX by 1. For online stores, the products are categorical variables and prices are quant uh, quantitative. A client's participation in a loyalty program is referred to as a logical Boolean variable. This type of variable indicates whether an event is true or false. And an event is true, the variable can take the value 1, and an event is false, it will display a 0. So let's go. Okay, so let's take a look at the first five rows of the logs data set to determine the column with logical values and print the name of this column. Okay, so they want us to do logs.head5 for the first five rows. And then they're going to want us to print the name of that column. Oops, I guess we got to print the head here. So the logical values. Um, let's see what they they didn't say logical did they oh it's the boolean so the purchase is uh is true or false right either the uh purchase is they didn't purchase it, it would be a zero or they did purchase which it would be a one so they want us to print the name of this column so print purchase We don't need the heads here anymore, I guess. Let's check that. So I do want us to print it. It's interesting. Okay, so next. Here's a list of variables for a data set from the eShop website. Print the names of the categorical variables. Okay, so the product name is going to be categorical, right? Because uh, I, it's not it's not numerical. And then see, I don't tell you if they want us to put comma separated or if they want us to do. One on each line, so we print name. Rating is a number, so that's not going to be it. Number of views is a number, so that's not going to be it. Manufacturer, uh, that's a specific grouping, right? Okay, uh, medium price, that's going to be a price, it's numerical. Min price is numerical. Max price, numerical. Category. Obviously, category is a categorical variable, right? Um, color is categorical reseller is an ID so basically if name is categorical then reseller is also categorical these might not count they may just be strings because um, usually they're unique I guess but um, 
and then has discount is just going to be a boolean so it should just be those um, if this is wrong we're going to take out name and reseller because those are kind of unique but because they're not numerical you can assume they're i guess you could assume they're categorical or you could guess they are okay yes it is okay so next A vacation rental service collects information about hosts. Print the names of the quantitative variables. Okay, so host name is going to be um, categorical. City is going to be categorical. Zip code is going to be basically categorical because you can't really do math on it. Potentially, that could be one. We'll go if if it's wrong, we'll go back and put that in as. But for right now, you can't really do like math with it, so you wouldn't really classify, even though it is numbers. Um, Accommo dates is a number. Um, number of bathrooms is a number. Number of bedrooms is a number. Quantitative. Number of beds is a number. And price is a number. Let's check that. Oh, misspelled a comma. Oh, and you gotta put these in parentheses, silly. A C C O M M O D A T E S. Bathroom. Bedroom. beds price perfect next okay the data from a news service contains information about user actions print the names of the categorical variables okay so user ID is going to be categorical Again, because it's a unique classifier, you might not consider it categorical, but because it's not numeric, you can just say it is. Um, the news type is um, categorical. The event type is categorical. And the tag is categorical, right? I think they all are. Let's see if that's right. Great, they all are. A crowdfunding service saves information about each project that uses platform for the names of the quantitative variables. Okay, so project ID that's going to be um, categorical. Category is going to be categorical. Goal, how much money? That's going to be a number, so that's going to be quantitative. Pledged, how much they were? That's also a number. Okay, um, state, the status is going to be a group, so that's going to be categorical. Backers is a number, it's the number of people who have, um, who have sent money, so that's a number, right? So let's check that. Correct, next. So working with missing values and categorical variables. You've already come across one strategy for dealing with missing values and categorical variables in the task pertaining to Ron her, uh, and his Hogwarts house. You most likely either knew about Ron's house already or you may have just looked it up. Whatever the case, it wasn't difficult to restore the missing value, Gryffindor. However, it's not always possible to verify missing data and replace it manually. We still have none in our traffic source column and NAN in our email column. What should we do about these pesky... Um, underscores. Pesky blanks, are they trying to cuss there? First and foremost, we need to answer the question of whether or not there is a pattern in the missing values. That is, you have to decide whether their appearance in the data set is random or deliberate. Study the different kinds of missing values in the table with the Game of Thrones characters questionnaires. There are three types of missing values. Missing completely at random means that the likelihood of missing values doesn't depend on any other's values. The missing value for Sansa Stark's gender is MCAR. The answer to this question doesn't depend on the nature of the question itself or other issues in the questionnaire. The missing value can be easily restored based off the name. Missing at random means the likelihood of missing values relies on other values in the data set, not on values on the column itself. Missing values like Jon Snow's family are MAR. The value is missing because Jon Snow's family doesn't exist. 
Missing not at random means that the likelihood of missing values depends on other values, including values in the column itself. This is a missing value in Bran Stark's political agenda. He deliberately didn't mention them because he can see the future and doesn't want to reveal his master plan. The missing value depends both on the nature of which of the question as well as the character of Bran Stark, which means it depends on the variable's value in another column. There are several ways to replace missing categorical values by replacing them with default values. This option works well for missing values at random. We can't enter John Snow's family in the questionnaire results table, but the missing value interferes with the work we'd like to do with the data, replacing the missing value with an empty string. However, not all empty values can be filled with the fill in a method. For example, it can't be used for missing none values. This method only recognizes NAND values in the table. To replace none values, we call the lock method. Boolean indexing permits you to select every row containing none in the desired column and replace them with a new value. Using this method, we can fill in the MCAR missing value in the gender column. In the previous task for Yandex market, you calculated a total number of visits and purchase. Let's take a look at those results. The number of visits from the undef source is significantly lower than that of any other traffic source. Take another look at the number of purchases from this from the source. This is how you found the conversion rate before. First, you calculate the number of rows with the visits, then you sum the values in the rows to find the total number of purchases. And for that, the two functions in order to group the source column count and sum. But there's one way we can reduce the great number of steps it takes to solve this task. Let's call the ag method, indicating which functions to apply to the purchase column. Write the column name and functions to a dedicated uh, data structure, a dictionary. A dictionary is made up of a key and a value. In this particular context, the key is the name of the column, which must be applied to, and the value is a list of function names. Save the results of the code completion to the logs grouped variable. Using the ag method, you calculate all the values you need in a single table. After doing this, the column names have doubled. If you want to refer to the sum of the purchases, simply input sum and purchase in this exact order. Now let's address the missing values. Okay, so there are NAND values in the email column. They are a substitution for the email addresses of users who didn't subscribe to the store's newsletter. There's no way to find out their email addresses, so you can't manually fill in the missing values with any meaningful data. There are too many NAND values to enter anything one by one anyway. However, it's possible to get rid of NAND values if you replace them with one single value. This could be something like an empty string, for example. Doing this will make the table easier to study, and you won't have to distinguish between NAND and email addresses. Replacing the missing values with empty strings by using the fill in a method that you've used once before. Uh, after that, print the first five rows of the data frame. Okay, so they want us to do logs.fill in a with an empty string. And then they want us to print the first five rows of the data frame, okay? So that would be head with five. Okay, so one thing that they might complain about is that I'm not uh, replacing just NAs in the um, email address column. I'm replacing all NAs in the total ta uh, table, so that could potentially be wrong, but we'll see. I guess I should have printed this logs head. Oh, logs equals logs. That fill in A. Okay, so figure out whether or not the missing values in the traffic source column are random. Ensure that every row with the source none has a specified email. Do this by applying two filters to the logs data frame. Traffic source equals none. Okay, so let's see, we want to I think we're going to want to use this ag method. Okay, so, oh, I forgot to hit next, by the way. Okay. This is, we're still up the top here with this lock method. They want us to change stuff to none. Okay, so I'm gonna do logs 
dot locate logs source equals equals none yep none and email column is an empty string okay so we want logs email equals equals empty string and they want us to print uh, logs okay let's see what that gets us Usually this is because you don't have the um, parentheses around it. Let's check that. Great, this data frame is now empty in every row. Without a source has an email. This means that a newsletter subscribers weren't assigned to their traffic source, which was email, okay? Next, replace the missing values in the rows that have empty source values within, with email value. Now check your results using the value counts method. Okay, so they want us to do logs. Logs dot locate, oh, dot lock. Locate where logs at source equals equals none. Um, are going to be equal to logs uh, let's see okay so after we've located every column that has that um, We're going to set its source um, one sec. It took a little bit longer, so I went and paused it and then wrote it out here. So I just went up to their summary here and they're showing you this is how you replace um, a column at some condition. So I first wrote out the condition here, which is we want the places the the source places and logs that are equal to none in quotation marks I originally had it as none without quotation marks um, and then when we satisfy that condition inside this lock statement we're going to set that equal to email I also was trying to set here instead of email I had like done the email column instead and that was wrong I just want email there and then I had to go of course go and print the value counts and then they accepted it so uh, with that we'll go on to the next one so I want to calculate the number of purchases and visits by calling the ag method, um, save the results to logs group variable and print them. So if we, um, we're basically gonna be copying this, um, logs grouped is, uh, actually they, they have the ag down here as well. So they do it separately up there and then down here they actually call the ag method so we're literally just going to copy paste this that's what they want okay um they want us to print that as well 
potentially. Okay, so now we have the purchase count and the sum. I don't know if we actually want purchase here. We want just want visits, so maybe they just want user ID here. The number of purchases, we have that, and visits. So I guess maybe visits is the sum. Let's, let's just check this and see if that's right. Yep. Okay, next. Calculate the conversion rate. So again, they already did this for us up here. Um, it's going to be logs grouped um, divided by, yeah. So it's the number of visits divided by, I guess the number of purchases divided by the number of visits. So we do logs grouped conversion is going to be equal to logs grouped purchases divided by logs grouped sum potentially. Let's see if that's right. And then we can print logs group to make sure that's right. Do sum divided by count here. So you can see if they did purchase, it'll be one, and if they didn't purchase, the zero. And so as you add them together, you're getting less and less. It, whereas the total count, uh, the zeros are also one. So it would just be one plus one plus one instead of one plus zero plus zero plus zero plus. So this should give us the same conversion. Let's see if that's right. Okay, let's check it. Correct, next. Undefined only has 12 measly purchases. This category differs by organizers of magnitude from its larger competitors and wouldn't be even close to, to fair to compare them. Combine it with one of the bigger categories in the data that has a similar conversion rate to undefined. Replace the source value of undefined with other. Calculate the conversion rate for each traffic source after its replacement. Okay, so they want us to um, it's basically this command, but we're, instead of doing none, we're going to do undefined, and uh, we're going to be set it equal to um, other. They have it set. Um, print the logs group data frame. Okay, let's check that. Correct. Next. Okay, so this video is getting kind of long, so I'll stop it here and we'll continue it next time. Thanks.